Hello Aquarius, my name is Paul and this is Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask that you connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And if there is anything you need me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. And remember, Aquarius, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And look at that Four of Swords. Very cool, because the Four of Swords is also the patron card for this cycle of reading. This is the... Um, the truce card. This is the resolution card. This is the um, the release from the kind of mental stress of things. Right? It's Jupiter in Libra. This is an expansive energy. This is this is really us trying to find common ground with everyone. Right? We're trying to find what's within all of us that we can connect to, and it's a, a way for us to expand out. Right? Because Jupiter is that expansive energy expanding our connections, reaching our mind out to other people despite our differences. This is very important energy in the world right now. We'll do the rest of our cards here for our Aquarius reading. I think this is going to be a very important reading. Um, we've got a lot of court cards. Oh, there's that Jupiter energy again with the Wheel of Fortune. Beautiful, beautiful. It is all about the timing, I think, right now. All right, let's select our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is one random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. We'll put Mr. Dow, the yin yang duck, right there on top. And uh, we're not going to look at that card until the end, okay? But we are doing something a little different on this channel. If you get an idea, a sense, a feeling, a little tickle of what that card is, I want you to put your prediction into the comment section, okay? Let's we'll see if we can collectively raise our vibrations, if we can tap into our own intuition and start discerning this mystery card together as sort of an interactive exercise, okay? But first, Let's look around the room here. We've got, uh, where are the major arcana? We just, we've got these two. We've got these two. We've got art or temperance. And we've got the wheel of fortune. Now, we have, we've got some fire energy of these two. We've got, well, we've got some water. We definitely have the air. Right, definitely have the air. Uh, but what we don't have is any earth energy. So I feel like there is a need for us to become grounded, to become centered. There's already the, the implication here that we need to find practical ways in our lives to manifest this energy. Right? The last step, that's up to you. That's something that I'm not seeing here. Maybe the mystery card is the last step in this process of creation, which is the materialization of it, the implementation of these ideas into your daily activities, right? In a gesture, maybe it's one ritual, gesture, ceremony, or, or something specific, or maybe it's a general kind of incorporating some of these ideas into your life, okay? Um, we've got this interesting cluster of, of air energy here. Um, I think there have been there have been some disagreements in your life lately. I think there's some there's a difficulty here with um, maybe maybe with a Scorpio person, maybe with a Sagittarius person. I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. It's possible, but I feel like there's a close relationship that. Um, we, we feel this, this difficulty. There could be some surface level disagreements. Um, and when I say surface level, I'm really kind of going with these two, with the Four of Swords and the Prince of Cups, because this is, 
This is a person or an energy, right, with the Prince of Cups that is trying to live authentically, right? Somebody that I feel like is, is really doing their best, um, trying to not be so reactionary, trying to speak their truth, trying to understand who they are and express that into the world, right? Uh, because the Prince of Cups, it's water on the outside, right? There's water on the outside there, and that's kind of this um, film that we all wear, this kind of uh, reflective coating that we have, you know. And when we receive energy from the world, um, emotional energy, vibes, you know, spiritual energy, uh, we tend to reflect the same thing back to the other person. You know, it's kind of this mirroring effect. I, I just, I always think of somebody that's either covered in water, covered in like little mirrors, you know, like sequins almost, um, just kind of reflecting the light. And so when you look at this person, it's kind of hard to see who they really are because they're just so reflective. You imagine someone who's just wearing all sequins all over their body, right? It'd be kind of blinding. There is some little spaces in between the sequins where energy can get in. So they are affected by things, right? They're not immune to, you know, they're not just 100% reflective. Um, some energy does get in, but it's hard to see this person because they're so reflective. But that's somebody that is trying to, trying to find their, their voice because there is air inside of that water it's like a bubble of water, right? And um, there's a lot more than meets the eye with this one. And I feel like maybe this is a person that you are trying to reach out to. This is in the position of a future, uh, future situation. It could be that with the fire energy here um, and the air down below, it could be that we're really trying to avoid going to these extremes, right? We're trying to avoid the con it's like a tightrope, you know? We don't want to be up here in the fire. We don't want to be angry. We don't want to be aggressive. Uh, we don't want to lose our cool. We want to be able to restrain Saturn in, in Leo. We want to be able to restrain our, our force, right? In dealing with, with this person. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want to open ourselves up to harm either. Nine of Swords down here. Anytime we get a Nine of Swords, we've got to do a Botanical Inspiration card. Because the Nine of Swords is really um, is us being vulnerable. We're opening ourselves up in such a way that other people can hurt us. And this we're, we don't want that. This is within... That you know that this situation is very delicate. You have to kind of walk this tightrope right here on the horizontal plane. We don't want to go up here to the Five of Wands. We don't certainly don't want to go down here to the Nine of Swords. We don't want to injure others energetically. We don't want to be injured either energetically. Uh, so let's do one of these inspiration cards. The Primrose. Youthful love. If I had a single flower for every time I think of you, I could walk forever in my garden. That's beautiful. That really is beautiful. I think what's going on here, and this is confirmed with this card, is that this is a loved one. This is a close, uh, a close relationship that you have. Okay. Uh, it could be a soulmate, could be a partner, a spouse, could be a friend, could be a family member. Someone very close to you. Um, and I think that we are wanting to I don't know, wanting to help this person kind of, I don't, help's not the right word. We're trying to reach this person, right? We've got this nine, we've got this nine of, maybe it should be this way. We've got the nine of wands here, strength. We're trying to strengthen the connection between this person. I think with the princess of swords in the background, maybe we feel like we're kind of, we're not really getting anywhere, you know? It could be that we have um, just begun this process of trying to not go to either extreme, trying to get past the 
what ultimately are kind of superficial disagreements and connect with this person on a deeper level, right? A more sun to moon connection, a cosmic soulful connection, spiritual connection. Because I think the methods we are using before haven't been working. So we're trying this, we're trying this four of swords. We don't want to argue. I'm not trying to, to tell you um, my opinion. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. Let's put aside our differences and let's connect. Let's just, let's try to strengthen this bond that we have, right? Let's shut our mouths before it becomes an argument, right? Let's not let it get to that point. Let's not get it, let it get to a five of wands or a nine of swords. It's a tightrope, right? And this is, this is that tightrope, but it's about truce, right? It's about the four of wands. It's about trying to put aside our differences and connect on a deeper level, something that goes way beyond the differences of, um, you know, opinion, religion, politics, uh, culture, all that stuff. It's a deeper human level bond here, right? And I think it is a loved one. And I think that they are struggling to be authentically themselves. You're struggling to connect and communicate with that person, all right? But I like what I see on the path of the serpent. We've got a knight, a knight of swords. This is showing um, a maturation of this communication, right? What may have started out as this princess of swords, it's kind of like, I'm not sure how to talk to them. I'm not sure, like there's, there's no confidence here, right? Someone that's got a sword, but they're shaky with it. Um, there's, it's like, we don't know how to connect. We don't know how to approach this situation or this person. And this could also be talking about the methods that we've tried in the past just haven't worked, right? But now we've got this maturation. Now it's like we're, we're being a little bit more direct, a little bit more confident. We're still walking that tightrope, right? We're not doing the, the wands or the, uh, the swords right there, the five or the nine. We're communicating in a more energetic way. We're communicating on that soul level, the fire level, right? Fire of air in this card. So it is a confidence and a more maybe direct communication, but it's also a communication that is trying to express a more fundamental idea. Not even one that that is to express love, right? Because this is fire, right? It's the very highest spiritual creative kind of thing. It's trying to connect spirit to spirit. Yeah. Not heart to heart, not mind to mind, not even soul to soul really, but spirit to spirit. Okay. Could be a twin flame situation. Okay. But I feel like they're in a, a delicate place right now, right? And I feel like with this with this Knight of Swords, I feel like you're getting kind of creative here with how you're approaching this person and how you're trying to forge this connection. Yeah. How you're trying to forge. You're putting more energy into this connection, but it's not being wasted in either of these. These we need to avoid. These are the snares. These are the pitfalls. Right? In the environment we have a nine of cups. This is the pursuit of happiness. This is us following our bliss. It's time, I think, for you and this person to get to get back to this, right? And this could be really what you want. This could be the ideal environment for you, one that is physically abundant and satisfying, mentally, emotionally abundant and satisfying, and also spiritually, creatively abundant and satisfying. Now we have an interesting uh, situation with the heart and mind, thinking and feeling, right? Mentally, emotionally satisfying. So we have here mentally and emotionally, mentally, emotionally, heart and mind, right? For some of you, maybe there isn't an other. Maybe these are both aspects of yourself. 
Maybe it's a it's an idea of how do we unify our heart and our mind. Maybe for some of you, the truth the the truce excuse me, uh, the truth of the matter is that this truce needs to be established between your thinking and your feeling, your head and your heart, or maybe fighting. Maybe there's you're trying to figure out how to communicate with your heart and strengthen that bond so that we can achieve the happiness and the abundant success wheel of fortune that's waiting for us at the end of the path of the serpent. So for some of you, yes, I think there's another person that we're trying to connect with. For some of you, that other person may be yourself. Okay? With the same the same energy applies either scenario. And ultimately what we want is the 9 of cups. We want to pursue our happiness. We want to follow our bliss. Right? What we don't want is to continually be in this trial, to be in this fire of this difficulty. This is the forge, right? This is the foundry. It's the art or temperance card. And what does tempering do? But it strengthens the steel. It strengthens the metal. We're trying to forge this bond, this unbreakable bond between us and the other. Right? Or thinking and feeling functions, perhaps. Like we see with the air and the water here. But there's a point where you can spend too much time in the foundry. Right? The blacksmith doesn't leave the substance, the material, in the fire all day, all night, 24-7, forever. It would literally, eventually, melt or it would just, I don't know, crack and crumble to dust or something, whatever happens, I don't know. Um, if you calcine something too long, it will melt. You can melt that, um, you know, the, the essential connection here. And if anybody practices alchemy out there, but... That... Um, That heat cannot be applied indefinitely. It has to be the right amount for the right duration. And then the process must continue. So this is why we don't want this temperance card. That's why it's in this position. This is the obstacle. This is what we don't want. This is maybe the, the, um, the strategy, the knowledge, the wisdom that you need to muster to realize when you've been in this fire enough and it's time to move on. Right? Maybe there's part of you that says, well, I just need to, I need to work on this a little bit longer. I need to strengthen this bond a little bit more. I need to keep trying. I need to keep, I need to stay in this fire until this is absolutely as strong as it can possibly be. And yeah, that's, that's very good, but you have to know when enough is enough. You have to know when you've been in that fire too long. So maybe take a break, cool off, come back. Um, or when this is as strong as this bond will ever be. And you're wasting your time by continuing to work at it. We need to get going on the next phase of the alchemical process. Right? Which, once you calcine your material, then you've got to mix it into a solution and evaporate the water off, fil you know, filter it, and all this kind of stuff. That's beside the point. Um, what we're really trying to do is continue the process. And here is the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is kind of the card that says, yeah, hey, look, we've got to get on to the next, the next step. The train can't stay in this station forever. We've, we've got more stops to make. There's another step in the process. We can't stay in the furnace forever. Can't stay in the oven, you know. Eventually, we got we got to take the thing out um, and realize that this is as done as it's going to be. This is as strong as we can make it, right? Um, because there's a lot more to do, and this is very expansive. This is Jupiter energy. It's very prosperous, right? There's a lot of success coming your way. We have to continue on with the process. And it's up to you to realize when enough is enough, 
when this bond is as strong as it will ever be. And it's time to get on with the next phase of things. Because this card is all about the timing. It's about you knowing when the timing is right. It's divine timing, yeah. You've got to perceive it. Right? You've got to be aware um, when this train's scheduled to leave again. You make sure you're on it. So, this is... Um, it has a somber feeling to it, right? But there's no there's no reason to assume that this is not going to be an absolutely unbreakable bond that you're forging here. Because I see that you're not giving up on this. You know, the Nine of Wands is all about the resolve, the will, the commitment, the oath that we've taken. I said I'm going to do this, and I'm going to stay here in this fire until it's done. Um, maybe the divine timing here is saying, hey, look, uh, it's done. You know, the timer went off. It's time to board the train and get moving now. It's time to pull this thing out of the oven. It's done. We don't want to overcook it. Right? Because there is a lot more for you to do. Your life is progressing. Right? This is a very good card. A lot of success in your future. There's a lot of growth and expansion, and it's time for us to get back on that train, right? Let's take a look at this mystery card. Uh, I've been trying to get a feeling in the back of my mind, you know, a little, a little tickle at the base of the skull there, what this card is. But I, I can't. I don't... Maybe it's going to be that earth energy, right? Maybe it is kind of... It's showing us that, yes, we are... We're ready to take the next step. We're ready to get things going. But right now, I don't know if you can see, I have goosebumps, right? It's not very cold in the studio, but I've... I've got a chill right now. I kind of think it's going to be some water. Either that or I'm, I'm kind of thinking a three of swords here. It's something that's giving me a little bit of of worry, I think. I'll switch the camera. If you want to put your predictions into the comment section, please do so. And I'm going to reveal this card. Now, we don't we don't need to do any other affirmation cards or Yijing cards or anything. No, I think we're... I think we're good. All right. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. I'm just going to look at it. Yeah, gosh. It is the three of swords. That's that's explains the chill. Um, but see this, this is interesting. This is head and heart combined. So now it, it's so weird. And now at the end of everything, we have a coming together of both of these different ideas that we were talking about, right? Where it was maybe between you and a loved one trying to forge that bond. But then for some of you, I think it's really trying to establish the bond or the connection between our own thinking and feeling. This is the success of one, but perhaps the failure of the other. This is the union of head and heart, the union of the swords, right, with the cup uh, represented by the heart there. Um, this is thinking and feeling united now. Right. But it's also the realization the kind of uh, the sorrow almost that we don't have all the power in this situation with the other our head and heart are unified and that's bringing us the realization that whoever this person might be um we can only do so much so there's a tinge of sorrow there Right? And the more we become unified within ourselves, the more we realize that they need to do the same thing. We can't do that. We can try to strengthen our bond with them. But they need to strengthen their bond with themselves. They need their heart and mind, right? Air and water in here, like I said. They need to sort out their heart and mind, too. So this is... This is interesting here. And this is, it's kind of a somber thing, right? 
Interesting that this is the Aquarius reading, right? Aquarius is an air sign, but it has that watery quality to it, right? A lot of air and water is, is kind of the theme here. Thinking and feeling. Because see, those three, the, the swords there are going right through the heart. It's kind of just getting stabbed in the heart, so to speak. You know, it's that painful realization. The painful realization that you can only do so much. That you can only keep yourself in the fire, in the oven, in the furnace for so long. And you can only do so much. There needs to be there needs to be something that takes place within that other. Right? So it's it's kind of a mixed blessing. I'm not sure how I feel about this one. Because I feel like this is really good news for some of you and maybe not so good news for for others, right? This is the union of your heart and mind. You're you're gonna have that bond between your own thinking and feeling functions. And we know when we can get back on this train and really expand our success and grow into our life. And for some of you, that might mean that we have to allow this other person to work on their own inner self, their own internal energies, because we don't have the power, the ability, or the authority to do it for them, right? This is a, this is a tough one here. We are going to try to do an extended. And if you want to stick around for the extended, click either above or below in the, um, the video description. Okay. Uh, new readings, Aquarius, Monday and Thursday. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, Thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I love you. And we're all in this together.